gems uh, and principles to uh, enrich our life in this book. And then when I was looking at one topic, I thought to make it like a marriage sermon, but with the advice of my, my, my wife, my, com my companion, she suggests that I would expand because in the church we have married people, we have unmarried people, and we have people who are single in the church. So I call it relationship advice. So the, the principles we will see in this uh, sermon today apply to how we select friends, how we can be true friends, and how we can uh, stay away from those who are not good friends, and how we may, for those who are unmarried, select the, the right uh, uh, character that you will uh, look for the right character for in, in the life of a future partner and also to surrender uh, to sur surround yourself with good friends with good character so we'll try to to to, to talk about this this morning there's a pastor who was preaching at the funeral uh, at the funeral and uh, his sermon and the man who had died was a drunk a bad father and an horrible husband and everyone was you know listening attentively to the pastor's words and find out what good can he say because there was nothing good to say about this person so what could possibly the pastor see that was positive so after a long moment of silence he surprised everybody and he turned to the widow and he said a very clear message and very simple to her, don't make the same mistake twice. <laughs> so the, 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 the Bible and the book of Proverbs in particular is filled with good advice about relationship and uh, we see a lot of examples of marriage in the Bible. You think of Sarah. When you look at some uh, characters and portraits of uh, Sarah, you may think that she is uh, sometimes cranky and bossy. Uh, you look at Job's wife, and she didn't have any comfort to offer to her husband when he was very sick. Uh, you look at uh, Abigail and uh, Nabal, who says she was a, a woman of noble character. She was a beautiful woman, and her husband was a fool. And it's a very pitiful marriage uh, things. So the, the Bible uh, has a lot to, to teach us about, to show us the good, the bad of people's character, and also give us the reasons why uh, a marriage will function or not. So we have a lot to see in the book of Proverbs. So for our purpose this morning, the book of Proverbs, has, remember that, that in the opening statement of the book, Solomon is talking to his son. He's talking to young people and uh, encouraging them to seek wisdom uh, in order to live a life of righteousness, a good life, and a better life. So the, the book of Proverbs has much to teach young people about the kind of friends they should choose or avoid, and uh, the choice of future partner if, when they think of to get married. And they should choose based on character. Uh, number two, for those of us who are married, we should not focus on the failures of our spouses because it will not go well in the house, as you know. But we should uh, uh, look at the, the principle found in the book of Proverbs and let them teach us how to be godly husband and, and improve our own character. And for those of us who are single, we should consider and examine the life of our friends. Look at themselves, whether they have the character of a true friend, and look at yourselves, whether you are a true friend, uh, worthy to be, to, be, uh, to be called a friend. So we're going to look at many, many scriptures this morning, so I don't know how it will go. I hope we will be able to go through everything. And first we will look at the characteristic of a good friend, because this will apply to uh, young people, this will apply to married couple, this will apply to single. It, these are good principles. That's what you are looking for in the life of a, of a good friend, to, so that you, you have a good relationship, or a good husband, or a good wife. So let's start. Uh, slide number two. Oh, I have the slide here, so I should be the one doing that. Yes, thank <laughs> you. All right, need to remember that. So what makes a friend a good friend? 
So it will certainly be the character of that uh, person. A good friend loves at all times. We all have not so good friends. If you like partying, you have money, you are generous with your money, you will be surrounded with a lot of friends. We read it quite clearly. You know it in life, you, you read it in the Bible as well. So a friend loves at all times and a brother is there for times of trouble. So when the going gets tough, who is going to stick with you? So you need, you know, in pastoral experience, you, you hear a lot of things and you meet a lot of people. I have actually, in my mind right now, uh, people who divorced because they went through tough times. And the stress uh, and the difficulty of marriage with the stress that the children, the rebellion of children, the, the problems that they had caused them to, to, to drift apart and not to be able to stick to one another. So you, you, friendship is one of the key elements of a successful marriage. It's, if you don't have friendship and a marital relationship, you will not uh, last very long because it is essential. You, you, you need to share, you need to understand, you, you need to, to show empathy, you need to uh, uh, feel what other, your partner feels. And same thing with friends. Your friends get discouraged, they, get, uh, they lose their job, they, they go through all sorts of uh, personal trials and adversities. So true friends love at all times. And a good friend, a true friend, will stick to you and your troubles. And you need, you need that kind of friend. Say amen if you believe that this morning. Yeah. A person who has friends may uh, harm, may be harmed by them, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. So here we, we call it a person who has friends means a man of many friends. That's what the, this text means, a man of many friends. It's easy to have uh, many friends about, but many friends can really disappoint you. Another Bible version says some friends are fun to be with. You may have fun while, while things go well, but when you will be the one needing your friends, you will might not find them fun anymore. They might just uh, abandon you and walk away from you, don't pay you back uh, you, the money that they owe you or whatever it is that they, uh, you, you will lose your, your friends at this time. So many friends may be unreliable and you need to apply these simple principles to a life of marriage. So you need to be reliable and we can count. You know, when you make your marriage vows, it says, end the good times and end the bad times. And that's what we are talking about here. Number two, good friends rebukes us when necessary. This is not a fun thing to be rebuked. Nobody enjoy it, nobody wants that, but it is necessary and a true friend will know how and will do it graciously and you will feel that even though it's painful, it will do you good. It will be for, you, for, you, for your good at, at that time. The one who flatters his neighbor spreads a net for his steps. You don't need to be flatters. You don't need to just have a slap. And that's something that I have seen many times, even in this church here. Sometimes one of your friends needs a kick not to be flatters. But sometimes you will stick to a friend who does wrong because he's a friend or because he's a family member. That's not true friendship and that's not what we ought to be done because flattering is not good. It will hurt at the end. And open rebuke is better than hidden love. Wounds from a sincere friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. And here we talk the wounds of a sincere, a faithful, reliable, trustworthy person. You have walked with that friend. You have lived with that person in marriage or in friendship. You know the character of that person. You know that person can be trusted. So when these sincere friends come to you with a rebuke, it will be good for you and it needs to do. And it's the same thing in marriage. Why should we think that? A wife can never rebuke her husband? <laughs> of course she can and she should because sometimes it will be the kindest things a wife can do for her husband is to tell him he's wrong or something is, is going away or he's not going the wrong directions. Of course 
she will do it graciously. She will do it with wisdom. And we will come back to th this other character of the wife later on. Okay, so it talks about the kisses from an enemy. And the kisses means many, many, many flattering words are not really, really good. Then there is good friend brings the best out of us. As iron sharpens iron, so a person sharpens his friend. If you have been married for a number of years and you are still married, you have experienced that verse. Iron sharpens iron. You have molded each other. You have changed each other. You have um, caused each other to transform just by being together and uh, de dealing with one another. We don't only need to be opposed sometimes, but we need to be also stretched, and we need to be uh, pushed higher, and we need to someone besides us to bring the best out of us. That's one of the goal of marriage. That's one of the goal of, of living together. It's one of the goal of true friends. You know, I have seen something. You take, let's say, two young person. If you take them individually, you judge their character, you will see this is a good, a good young person, she is a good young person. But you put two of them together, they bring the worst out of them. These two good persons sometimes have a chemistry that produces good with certain friends, and with other friends, they will, they will bring the worst out of that. It's, it's kind of a personality issues or whatever. When I was youth pastor back home and we had these huge uh, youth convention, like six, 700 young people that would come for a weekend, every time you have these young people that would come from miles apart that had never met each other, they didn't know each other, but they could track all the bad ones in the 500, <laughs> 6, 700, and they would um, uh, have a row of their own, and they would, you know, I, I was always wondering, how do they do that? They've never met each other, they don't know who they are, but they can track in a crowd which one we can be rebellious together, or whatever it is. So I don't really understand that. But uh, sharpens really do sharpen uh, irons. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, that's what we need. Where am I now? One, two, three. Okay. Let me stick to, to, to my notes a little bit. Okay. <coughs> Iron sharpen means to grow sharp. Your husband or your wife should help you to be smarter, sharper, you know, like to develop you and all this. I certainly have experienced it of my life companion. She has made me a better person than I was. And uh, constructive criticism sharpens character because it's done in love and it's done for you for your good. And it is wonderful to have true friends who do not allow us to go passive. A true friend will not allow us to backslide. A true friend will not allow us to be lazy, to go in the wrong direction. This is a true friend. He doesn't, she or she doesn't w want to do that. So um, uh, that's important for us. So they will push us uh, higher. Amen. And then a good friend is thoughtful and tactful. Where am I now? Yes. Oh, I love that. Yes. Like one who takes off a garment on a cold day, or like vinegar poured on soda, so is one who sings songs to a heavy heart. What does that have to do with marriage? Let me illustrate to you, and I will ask my lovely assistant to come here. <laughs> and the camera can zoom in on our experience here. Because in that text, it talks about vinegar poured on soda. Okay. So, let's see. Okay. We have, we have soda here, okay. You see that? We have little soda and vinegar, okay. So what will happen? Be careful, maybe the whole place will explode. Okay. Wow, that is marriage. Be careful. Be careful what you say, okay. Thank you. 
you have illustrated a big lesson for all of us in this room this morning. Like one who takes off a garment on a cold day, or like vinegar poured on soda, so is one who sings songs to a heavy heart. Do you go through hard times, broken hearts, worry sometimes, where you feel alone, where you feel overstress and burdens, or you lose a loved ones and you have a broken heart and things like that? What kind of friend do you need then? Someone who will come with jokes and the cheap uh, words of encouragement or whatever, things like this. No, you need someone who is thoughtful and tactful. Someone who understands your moods. Someone that can read your emotions. And someone that will know better than trying to make a joke when it's not time into your life. Otherwise, this kind of explosion will happen and it will not be for your good, but it will, it will, it will not work. So you need a, a friend like this. A, a friend that know when to say something and when not to say something. A friend that will uh, bring healing in a way and to your broken uh, heart at, at the time. Uh, it's, it's, it's so very, very important. You agree with that? Yes. It's not only about what we say, but how we say, why we say it, that is important in order to not cause this kind of situation. So we need that kind of friend that is uh, thoughtful, tactful, and understand us and care for us. A good friend offers us wise counsel. Perfume and fragrant oils make you feel happier. And the sweetness of a friend comes with sincere counsel. Isn't that important in life? That you have someone that will come and when you need it and make you feel better? Like when you, uh, uh, women maybe will un understand that, that uh, structural uh, grammar here better with perfumes and incense or something like that. It smells good, makes you feel better about yourself. But the sweetness of a friend comes from his sincere counsel. We need that kind of friend the wise friend that will bring something good into, into our life. Do you say amen to that? Amen. amen. Of course, there is also the home environment. We need to talk a bit about the home environment when we talk about friends. Because if you remember, you will have your, you remember your parents when you were young and your childhood. How many times have they uh, scolded you or uh, told you don't hang out with these friends, these friends are not good for you, choose these friends instead, or they would uh, get to know your friends and they had a lot to say about, about your friends. So that is important to think about. In the book of Proverbs, you see a lot of teaching of the father and the mother instructing and warning the, the child. So it's very important that you look at the character and you observe the home. I always tell young people who are not married, go and check the family. Because what you see in that family is what will come into your own. Well, if they scream, if they fight, if they lack respect, the brothers and sisters, they hate each other, they are not respecting their parents. When you marry, actually, what happens is that this person with her, uh, his or her upbringing will come and live under your roof with all the emotional baggage that we'll have. And the biggest life forming uh, for our character is our upbringing from our parents. Their example or their absence of, of example, bad or good examples. And I don't know why it's like this, because even though some people will say, I will never be like my parents, they always end up being exactly like their parents. <laughs> that, that's that is just a, a marvel and things like that. So it's very important. So let's move on and talk about how parents, we have a duty to equip our, our parents and see that their character is being uh, built uh, for their success in life and their m partnership and marriage when it will come to that. The character of a godly wife or good woman or lady friend, if you want to put it in this way. A good wife gets a good character from honoring the Lord. That's what we learn in the book of Proverbs. It is from that 
fact that she honors the Lord, she puts the, the Lord first, it's important. That's where her good character, good nature, her goodness, and her, her zeal, her inspiration comes to uh, enrich the, the marital relationship. So even for your friends, even if you are not married, uh, look around you, who are you going to, to select as friends? You select someone who feel the Lord. Select someone who put the Lord first into, into their life. So in contrast, you will find the book of Proverbs, many men mentioned, because uh, you not only uh, see the, the uh, direct positive quality mentioned in the book of Proverbs, you also have the negative quality or the contrasting uh, qualities that also uh, give us instructions and warning in the book of Proverbs. So you will find, uh, depending on which Bible version you, you are using when you study the book of Proverbs, you will read about the strange woman in the King James, or the foreign or the alien woman. So, but many, most of the modern Bible versions will see the immoral woman, the wayward woman, the seductress woman. So that's how they translate it, because the, the term for, uh, for foreigner or strange or alien woman, it means someone who doesn't live based on the covenant of God. They don't respect, they don't stay within, they don't live under the culture of the kingdom of God. They, they, they went beside that. They, they reject that. And, and they live in another way. So we talk about a, an immoral woman, a seductress here. So to contrast with a woman who fears the Lord. So you see the, the both uh, 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 in contrast at that point. You also find in the book of Proverbs the, uh, the terminology, depending on the Bible version that you read, an excellent wife, a wife with strength of character, or a virtuous woman who becomes the crown of her husband. So it described the outstanding character qualities of, of, the, of the ideal wife or the ideal life partner that you want for your life or the, the good friends that you should uh, hang out with. So an excellent wife or a good friend is wise. In the book of Proverbs, many times wisdom is being personified by women. We have seen it in, in the previous uh, sermon before. So here is the ideal wife characterized as a woman of wisdom. A wise woman builds her home. She, she contributes what she does, brings unity, it, it, it does good. It, 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 the whole family, you know, like uh, gravitate and receive something good from this, this woman. And uh, I remember years ago, my wife and I, when I was called to be a missionary, uh, the Lord had uh, a prophecy spoken to my wife, how important it would be to her to be a woman of prayer, pray for her husband, and that she would be the, the center, because I was going to, to travel a lot, but she was going to be the, the, the magnet of our family. So she had received a, a prophecy like that in our early years in the ministry. A wise woman builds her home, and a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. And um, uh, Proverbs 31, 26, when she speaks, her words are wise and she gives instructions with kindness. There, there's a sweetness into the word of the wise woman. She knows when to say it. And I, I, actually, I'm reading all of these things and I cannot but think of my wife. She has all these qualities. Uh, <laughs> yes, she does. She does. That, that's, that's, <laughs> yes. I don't know. I don't deserve that. But uh, this is this is the wife that God brought into my life. I, I just I'm reading it and I, I, I cannot not say it because her words are wise and she gives instructions with kindness. And those of you who know her, you know she's true. So, but in the opposite of the godly woman, as described here, the woman called folly. There's another one. Huh? This is, is she is loud. She is naive. Or here the word naive means simple or foolish. Uh, and, and what the way she talks or whatever, and she doesn't know anything. And, and uh, uh, qu quite an illustration here, like a gold rings and a pig's snout is a beautiful woman who rejects discretions. You know, I remember years ago to be in a restaurant with a bunch of Christian friends, and this brother had a very beautiful wife, but when she would speak, 
you could see the the husband turn his the, the eyes like he was like he just wanted to crawl under the table and that that always reminds me this verse always make me think of that that picture that they have in my mind a good wife honors her husbands or bring honors to her husbands. Uh, Proverbs 12, 4, a wife of noble character is the crown of her husband, but the wife who acts shamefully is like the rottenness of the bones. In order to be happy, you know that the wife, and then also the husband, it goes both ways. We contribute to the reputation of the family. We, we build a, a standing and influence. Uh, people will look at our family, they have something bad to say. Oh, look at this family, or look at this uh, woman, or look at this, at this man. Or, or they are. So uh, we, need, we need noble character to bring. To be successful in life is not enough. Uh, you get money, get promotion, and a job is not enough. If you come home and you are unhappy in your home, you are not able to enjoy your success at work, or your social success. You will never be able to. You need to have the combination of both to, to, to be happy. And a woman of noble character will bring it into, into her life. Her husband has full confidence in her. We, do we, where am I here? Okay. Her husband has full confidence in her. As a result, she will greatly enrich his life. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. They build their home. They bring up their children. They work together. Whatever this wife contributes to the family is going to be good. It's going to be a blessing for the family. It's going to enrich the family. She may work. And today's young, younger family, I think we, we pretty much have experienced that. It's not maybe in the, like, uh, in the previous uh, generation where the man used to go to work and the salary was most of the time enough to make a living. But it seems that today, in today's world, it's not working like that. The two needs to go out to work and have a career. It, otherwise, you cannot pay the bills at the end. And uh, it seems that we are becoming uh, poorer and poorer, like the middle class gets poorer uh, ev with every generation. So a good, a good wife who has skills and has a wisdom and a business skills or whatever it is that she can contribute or, or get a part-time job or whatever it can bring so much more. But this verse is m more than only uh, money or work, but it's like a, a contribution of characters, a contribution of, of, of love, of friendship, of support and all of these things. In our society, uh, because this text in Proverbs 31, we know it's about the virtuous woman, the woman of noble character. It's a very good, it's, it's actually a good observation to make because you, you look at the Old Testament and many times you have the, um, the, um, the um, impression that in the Old Testament uh, there's not a lot of good things to say about women. It's all about men and fighting and blood and whatever it is. But actually there are very good things said about women in the Old Testament. And uh, a man like uh, Solomon, who has been married about 1,000 times, uh, uh, is able to uh, give a portrait of, of what a, a wife of good character uh, could, could, uh, could be like. And uh, one thing that you will may, may surprise you, and the wonderful descriptions of this virtuous woman, there is no reference to her physical attractions, attractiveness. It doesn't talk about what she looks like, she may be uh, round, she may be skinny, she may be tall, she may be short, she may have a long nose, wear glasses, have a, a long hair, short hair, we don't know what she looks like. But what you see is a beautiful picture that prays her character, and the husband is very satisfied, he's very happy. And you know, beauty is not only in the physical uh, appearance, because sometimes you may look at someone when, when you develop a, a, a relationship uh, of value with someone and you start discovering the, the inner qualities of someone, even though the person is not like a, a natural beauty, like a magazine uh, front page type of person, you may still see the beauty of that person, the beauty in her eyes, the beauty in her look, the beauty of her expressions. You will find beauty in, in, the, in the person because you have spent enough time to, to get to know her. Uh, or him, and you will see something uh, attractive about that person which is beyond uh, physical attractiveness. Do you agree with that? Yes. yes? Okay, I'm glad you agree with me. Yes. Okay. 
So what she does help her husband. Martin Luther gave a description of his wife, and the description of his wife says, the greatest gift of God is a kind spouse who fears God, loves his house, and with whom one can live in perfect confidence. And that is a description of what we just read. A good wife, oh, I'm sorry, I should not go there. A good wife, um, where am I? A good wife is known for her graciousness. Um, and we see that a gracious woman gains respect. And the word grace here can also be translated like a, a generosity. She is generous because you can, you, many times in Proverbs you contrast one part of the uh, saying with the other part. And the second part you have a ruthless man or a violent man who only interested in gaining wealth and will crush people or whatever, have no grace, no mercy, no interest in people, but just into gaining uh, something for himself. And now we are contrasting with this uh, generous or this kind wife who has a more noble uh, character here. So she is generous, she's a woman of grace. When she speaks, you hear good things, you hear common sense. And, it, uh, and then you contrast this woman with what we call in the Bible contentious woman or quarrelsome uh, woman. It is better to live alone in the corner of an attic than with a quarrelsome wife in a lovely home. And it's uh, the lovely home here, when you look at the text, the original text, it's like a, a home of company. It's like a home where you can have social gatherings, like a big home. That's why we see with a big, uh, lovely, wide home. So it's better to go and hide yourself in the small attic than to have to, to, to share your life with an angry uh, woman, a brawling woman, a nagging wife, or uh, annoying due to the contentious uh, things. So you have actually quite many uh, verses talking about this. It's better to live in a desert land than with a quarrelsome and easily provoked woman. So we are called to look at the, our character here th this time. Does th that describe you? I hope not. I believe that in Lighthouse we have not this kind of, of women here. You know? A continual dripping on a rainy day and a contentious wife are alike. Oh, I like this next part, verse 16. Trying to keep her in check is like stopping a windstorm and grabbing oil with your right hand. So it's not working because a quarrelsome woman also drive him out of his own house. It's un <laughs> uncontrollable, it's un uncontrollable. The wind blew at any moment in any direction, so the quarrelsome woman is just frustrated and just blew out and uh, nag and complain without warning. So we see all of these characteristics, positive and negative characteristics, and it's always a call Observe character, look for character when you look for friends or marriage partner, or look at your own character because you are in relationship with other person. Okay, quickly, let's look at the qualities of a good husband. Actually, uh, if, you, if you search for the terminology uh, husband uh, in the book of Proverbs, maybe you will not find so many. Uh, verses which at first sight you will think that there is not a lot that Proverbs has little to say about the qualities of a godly husband but actually it's not the case because it will point to the qualities of uh, the, the person of character which you should be looking for either as a friend or as a life partner and you I don't want to uh, go a lot into that, but just to give you a chance to look at these, look for these qualities in your friends. Uh, tell your children to look for this kind of qualities in their friends. Be that kind of person for the spouse or the, the friends that you have around you. Develop these qualities. And if you think these are a lot, then you have also these ones to add. So there are many, many, many uh, texts in the book of Proverbs calling us 
to observe the character of a good husband, a good man, a good wife, a good person, a good friend. Amen? Are you convinced now? Yes. yes? Okay. So, actually, the book of Proverbs also make a point about the uh, distinctions between personality, look, personality, and character. And you will find it in the next scripture here. Charm is deceitful, okay? Charm is deceitful and beauty fades, but the woman who fears the Lord will be praised. God is not concerned with our personality, but he is concerned with our character. Because when it says charm here, the word charm, it's not only physical appearance. It's actually different. The word for charm here is grace, and the original language is grace or gracious or pleasant. So it is what you show to people, it's what you pretend to be. It's like I always tell in premarital counseling that uh, the courting stage is the most hypocritical stage of love. Because you only display what you want, you know, the good of you, your patience, your kindness. Like if your girlfriend is late, Oh, it's okay, no problem. <laughs> when you are married, and if you have a car, beep, 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 beep. Come on, come on, hurry up. Come. So, so you, you, see, you see that. So charm, or, or uh, anyway, the pleasant side that you want to display is deceitful. That's what it means, that the charm, like your, your loving personality, your nice smile on Sunday morning. Hey, listen, let's talk the truth here. There are people who come here and look charming, and you are not charming a lot when the other people meet you during the week. Is that true? <laughs> but we see a charm of you. I've been in mission fields where I've seen many people relate to us, the missionaries, all with a lot of charm. But then when you hear what kind of personality they have, they are like ferocious beast or tiger, you know, when you get to that. <laughs> so don't be fooled by the, the charming personality. That's not what God is looking at. He's looking at the true character. Fear the Lord. Because if you fear the Lord, you're not putting up just a, a, a superficial or a pretentious uh, uh, picture of yourself. What people see is what you are, because you are naked before God, because you, are, you have allowed the Holy Spirit to sanctify you, to transform you, and to make you become a man or a woman of God. So you have nothing to hide. What you, get, what you see is what you get, okay? So that's what it says. Let us learn that our character is far more important than our outward beauty, our personality. You know, outgoing and assertive men that are normally sought after by young women are not necessarily better leaders. Sometimes a very quiet and shy and uh, not outgoing man can be a much better husband and a much more responsible father and a much enjoyable companion for your life than just this fiery crazy guys that you meet in teenage years that is like, uh, you know, be, don't be fooled by the charm of that person. Uh, I have a lot to say on that, but uh, come and see me after the service. Okay. Uh, charms, our personality is deceitful. Beauty is fleeting, but uh, what stay is our character is eternal. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. And the woman should look for true Christian character and strong faith, as you can see here in this text here. In the fear of the Lord, one has strong confidence. Look for that kind of man or friend, and it will be a refuge for his children. And to finish our message today, I will ask my assistant, my lovely assistant, to come <laughs> again to uh, illustrate another uh, truth of a relationship. Would you please uh, come with me? Yes. No, it's for my name. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, just a minute and we need to, to read that. Pleasant words are honey from a honeycomb. 
sweet to the soul and healing for the body. Do I need to explain anything? <laughs> As we know, life is not only romance. There's a lot of tough times and broken heartedness and injustice, unfairness in our lives. And sometimes what you need in your life is some sweetness. And you can get it from your f true friend or you can get it from your life partner uh, that will be. You need a friend to walk along the path of your life that loves at all time. That is there when everything falls apart and uh, just will bring some sweetness into your life. I would gladly marry my wife again. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> if I had, uh, actually, I, I ask her, her qu these questions many times. Uh, often I ask, would you marry me again? <laughs> and she always say yes. <laughs> Amen. So, in our life, I mean, it's a bit light on the lighter side this morning, but these principles are our life. We, we walk this life our daily life with all of the crazy situations that we, that we may encounter. Life is not a romance, life is hard, and we need companion. We need people who love us, people who bring the best out of us, people who are there when, when we need it, people who are tactful to speak into our life, and that brings some sweetness into a bitter world and our bitter life. If you agree, say amen. And then let's stand and ask the Lord to make us to be that kind of person for someone else. Hallelujah. Father God, thank you this morning for bringing alive the precious gems found in the book of Proverbs on relationships. Lord, we, we thank you first of all for our friends here in this room, our brothers, our sisters. You brought us into a family. We are brothers and sisters, but we are also friends and we care for each other. And sometimes we've been more hurting or speaking in the back or whatever it is that we have been hurting each other. But Lord, help us to, to look at ourselves, see what kind of, are, are we true friends to someone else? Have, 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 have I stood by? Have I spoken the, the word, the truth, uh, the truth to that person? And Lord, what kind of husband, what kind of wife have I been? And what kind of husband and wife will I deserve in, in my life? It's not only that I want this type and that type, but what kind do I deserve by the character, my own character? And thank you, Lord, that uh, you are guiding us with wisdom this morning, and you are giving us a, a check of our own character and personalities this morning. Help us to be a better person and to be a person that can change the world, that can touch our neighbors, that can show true love and true friendships. Uh, whatever situation, whether we are among friends or with our husband or our wife. And thank you, Lord, that you love us and you are showing us the perfect example. And Lord, you have come to transform us and save us from our selfishness and our sin and our pride and our evil side to give us a, a new heart capable of loving. And thank you that we have the Holy Spirit who bears the fruit of love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, and all of the list of the good qualities that we need to be happy in our life. And thank you for all of our friends. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. And see you.